G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to have a look at a plane that is definitely worthy of fighting the F-14 at the same battle rating, and will definitely be capable of fighting planes like the F-16, the F-15, the MiG-29, and so on. But before we do that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Those of you who've been subscribed to me for a while now will know all about Opera GX, the opera-based browser built for gamers and PC enthusiasts. Opera GX features a network and resource limiter that prevents Opera from using up precious RAM, CPU, and internet bandwidth. I actually used to use this feature to upload videos when I had a slow internet connection. Opera GX also features an insane amount of customizations, including social media shortcuts that open apps like Twitter, Discord, Messenger, and even TikTok directly in browser. They even feature an in-browser music player, allowing you to use Spotify, YouTube Music, and other streaming apps to play music in browser. Opera GX is also on mobile and can connect up to your desktop version, so you can take all your tabs of research with you. To help with easy migration from other browsers, Opera GX's quick import tool helps transfer your saved settings into Opera GX. Opera also supports Chrome extensions, so you can use apps like BTTV, 7TV, as well as your favorite voucher apps, just as you would on other browsers. So what are you waiting for? Head to the link in the description below and download Opera GX on desktop or mobile for free. It's a great product that I use every day, and I think you'll like it too. This is the F-104S ASA. This plane sits in a bit of a funny position that is somewhat aligned with the Harrier GR7 and the A-10 in the tech tree. This plane has a fairly narrow flight profile, meaning that you can't do a whole lot of things, despite it being one of the fastest, if not the single fastest jet at sea level in the game. This plane tops out at about 1450, but you'll more likely see about 1430 kilometers per hour on the deck, and that's the speed that you're gonna be using to try and save your life. It's pretty much only useful against a couple of enemy planes. Uh, a lot of planes at this battle rating can only sort of do about 1360, uh, but unfortunately for you, the plane that will give you the hardest time is able to both catch you and outturn you, and that plane is the F-14. It's just better. I don't know what else to say, but the F-14 pretty much does everything except the IR missiles better than the F-104 SASA. I'm pretty sure it even has more ammunition in the 20mm gun. I'm, uh, maybe they're the same. Maybe I get a, a weird impression about it being larger in the uh, in the F-14. But regardless, the F-104S is, you know, different. It's very, very tough to fly. And a lot of people will struggle to play this plane, simply because it is just not forgiving at all. This plane really struggles to let anyone have any sort of leeway with it, because the moment that you're targeted by something with a pulse Doppler radar, you are pretty much done for. And of course, anyone can flare AIM-9Ls, but it is bloody hard to sort of break the lock of, say, an AIM-7. Now, this plane has four missiles, and you might not think of that as too much because they're AIM-9Ls, but in the context of the broader ecosystem around top tier, it actually kind of does matter. It's half the missiles of all the other, pl all the other pro predominant planes, like the F-4 EJ Kai, the F-14, uh, and the only plane that it matches that is what I would consider extremely capable, or perhaps meta at this BR, would be the Mirage. And the Mirage has two March from Magic 2s, but it's also got two fairly good uh, the semi-active radar homing missiles. And you might say, well, this plane also comes with the Aspira. And whilst that's true, you both have to sacrifice guns, and you are limited in your abilities with that missile simply due to the lackluster radar. So I would personally recommend sticking with the gun and sticking with the four AM9Ls, because the AM9Ls are probably going to give you the best results. I don't know what it is, but the Aspid just doesn't seem to hold locks, or at least this particular radar with the Aspid guided, and of course it just tends to do funny things occasionally. I don't really know what it is, and I don't really know how else to explain it, but it just doesn't really work as well as the AIM-9Ls. The F-104 is therefore a very, very tough plane to fly, and a very, very tough plane to master, simply because of the flight profile, but also because of the limited abilities that you have with this aircraft. What I've decided to do here, and as you can see in the gameplay, is stick with the team, and that's probably the best thing that you can do. Because it's so fast, you'll end up 
being the first on the battlefield a lot of the time, but I would rather put this to flanking capabilities instead of going headlong into the enemy defenses. You're going to find yourself in a lot of head-on engagements, and pretty much every head-on engagement with an F-14, where there is an AIM-7 present, you are going to lose, and that goes for the F-4J as well. But of course, if you can find engagements like these ones here, where your opponents are very much uh, distracted, you can get yourself some very, very easy kills. I've just gotten an easy kill on that F-14, and this F-4E is about to meet another easy kill. So there's three easy kills right there, but it is pretty much the same for any other plane. You know, if you're in an F-14, you could probably do the same. Uh, and that's why I have such a gripe with the F-104S, because it is just so limited, and the F-14 can basically do everything else aside from the all aspect, but you can kind of make that up with the AIM-7s, and the AIM-7s produce similar results at a greater range. So I'm personally a little bit partial to this plane, but despite that, I've actually had a good time playing it. I've genuinely enjoyed my time playing this aircraft because it is a bit of a challenge to fly. It's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and of course, it definitely requires a lot of luck, but I've had a decent amount over the past few days, perhaps the past week of, of gathering footage for this aircraft, because it's a plane that sort of makes me stop and reconsider every decision, reconsider every movement, and it's just made me a better player, I think, because this plane is just so tough to use. Even everything down to the guns, I find a little bit difficult, just because it is a, uh, hard to get those guns into place. And the F-104 is, you know, surprisingly rewarding. It's a tough plane to fly, but it's only going to get tougher. And that's the, the thing that I would really like to talk about today. The F-104S ASA is on the cusp of fighting against rank 8 aircraft. At 11.3, it's really not going to have the ability to separate itself from aircraft that are of a much higher caliber. Aircraft such as the F-15, the F-16, the MiG-29, and uh, Panavia Tornado, you name it, Further iterations of the uh, of the Vigan and uh, eventually maybe the Gripen, things like the Rafale and perhaps the Eurofighter might all be in uh, BR's reach of this plane. But it doesn't even have to be that extreme of things like the MiG-31 and the uh, and say uh, late F-16s or or anything like that. It could simply just be having to face a plane that is slightly better, and that is pretty much slightly better in every way. Things like the later F-14s, where they are lighter, they have a better engine, and they have, well, they will likely, inevitably, have better missiles, and the F-104S just doesn't have the capabilities to do uh, any, like, meaningful combat against these aircraft. It'll just be fodder and food, and whilst you can kind of expect that in a full-up tier, these aircraft are likely going to be very close in battle rating to it. You might end up with an aircraft that is only two or three battle rating positions away, and it is substantially better. You might end up with like a an F-100D versus MiG-21 SMT situation. And the only sort of case where this plane would make sense is in a case like this, where you've got heaps of planes that are greatly distracted by your opponents, and you have easy kills with your 9Ls from perhaps three and a half kilometers range. And of course, if they flare you and switch the afterburner off, they are easily going to diminish the, the effects of that missile. Now that SU-22 was quite luck, quite unlucky, but I'm pretty confident that they didn't switch off the afterburner, turn and use flares in a combo that was actually viable and, and fair enough to the AIM-9L. But this is the only situation where I've currently found the F-104S ASA any, uh, to, to be of any use. And unfortunately, this leaves not a lot in the future for sort of edge case planes like this. And granted, there are always going to be edge case planes where you are just simply unable to fit them in the meta just because of the, the, the way the game works. And, and you know what, that's fair enough most of the time, but it's a real shame that a plane that is, at the end of the day, a top tier aircraft, uh, just flat out unable to compete. And it's unable to compete now in some capacity. I personally don't think that this plane is uh, particularly powerful. I don't really think it is particularly strong. I, I think it is a little bit of a pain to fly in a lot of uh, a lot of the time because the moment a plane with a pulse Doppler radar and AIM sevens looks at you, you can pretty much kiss your ass goodbye, and that's not very fun. So I genuinely don't really see much merit in this plane. But 
That being said, I'm flying it around in the, in the video here. You can see me getting lots of kills with it, uh, and I am broadly enjoying it, but mainly for the sense that it is that challenge that, uh, y you know, makes you reconsider the way that you play the game in order to get yourself some kills. Now, in this case here, these two planes are eventually going to kill me, but unfortunately, because of a hard drive failure, I've lost the recording, and I've lost so many bloody recordings that put me basically a week behind in my footage and uh, gathering and, and video making. So uh, I'm doing my best to try and make up the difference. So if you guys would, you know, like to support the channel, definitely just give the video a like and, you know, comment something about the F-104S or perhaps something that you might be interested to see when the Rank 8 jets come out. But overall, this plane is a very much edge case. The F-104, we're going to go into some gameplay. We're going to have a look at sort of how I played this plane. And you can very much see that I'm on the periphery and looking out for things like AIM-54 Phoenixes. An early tactic, or, or, or a very common tactic, early game rather, is for the F-14s to scoot in and out and uh, drop their AIM-54 Phoenixes in amongst the oncoming enemy planes. So having all of these missiles is a massive deterrence and it bleeds a lot of energy and it forces opponents to go down to sea level. This is pretty important. And of course, with the RWR that you are equipped with on the F-104S ASA, it is pretty disappointing because it is only uh, a, a general warning. It doesn't give you a directional uh, warning to as to where the, uh, the radar lock is coming from. And that's really, really tough in this particular circumstance where you could be locked from practically anywhere, especially at high altitude, where you're not really sure where your opponents are going to be coming from. And of course, where the, the closure distance is extremely rapid. You can cover a 20 kilometer distance in less than a minute. And of course, if you are in a head on situation, that time will be practically halved. So you really have to make sure that you know where your opponents are coming from. And the only way to really do that in this circumstance is with your Mark 1 eyeball. So using your, your, your mind, rather using your eyeballs is practically the only way to do it. Now, I've managed to get myself one kill, two kill, red kill and blue kill over here, uh, but I'm practically about to hit number four. And this is where this particular match strikes a bit of a turn. Um, yeah. Occasionally this happens, and of course you don't really have the countermeasures to waste. Unfortunately, in this case, I managed to meet a sticky ending, but that's okay, because we're going to make up this particular match, and it's quite the banger, to be honest. Um, I feel like I did pretty well, but it is a really slow start, so we're going to sort of be sitting on the periphery, and you'll find that with the F-104s, you will tend to sit on the periphery quite a lot, because particularly because of these missiles that are streaking across in front of the screen over here, you won't really be able to sort of participate in the battle until all these AIM-54s are cleared off the board because you are just going to be such an easy victim despite them only having a 20G turn rate. They travel immensely quickly and they have immense range, so you really have to be careful when you engage, particularly in a uh, sort of high altitude scenario because you will find that the uh, AIM-54s, so someone will be up there. It doesn't matter who they are, you'll always find one or two clowns sitting at 10,000 meters, and of course there'll be an AIM-54 with your name on it. So honestly, I don't think climbing is a really good strategy in this plane. I would personally stick to the altitudes because that is where you're gonna get the best, sorry, the, the, the deck, because that is where you're gonna get the best results. And speaking of someone hiding up in the clouds, we have an F-14 here looking very juicy, but I can't do anything. I can't even reverse the damn guy because he's just at such a, a position of advantage in front of me. So I'm going to do the smart thing and release a couple of missiles. Unfortunately, one of them doesn't strike, but the other one does strike the F-14, which leaves the F-8, and that's, you know, not a very bad uh, trade-off there. Although I would have liked to have gotten that kill on the F-8. I didn't realize he was coming towards me, um, but the only, the only plane I would really you know, on a, on a constant, continuous basis, uh, recommend going on, not quite head-ons, but sort of semi-head-on movements, would be the F-14, just because it's got such a huge thermal signature. It's just, it sticks out like a sore thumb, and you can pretty much frontal lock at about four and a half kilometers, whereas most other jets, you'll be sort of lucky to get that three and a half, even two and a half kilometer for some of the non-afterburning jets. And at this point here, I'm pretty much boned, I've at least... It's the way I feel. I, I felt like I got nothing left. 
I might as well just sort of take the L while I've got it, try and grab myself a couple of enemies while I'm there, uh, and maybe, just maybe, I can get away from this F4J, uh, and maybe, just maybe, I can use the advantage, or the, the disadvantages rather, of those Pulse Doppler uh, radars to try and escape a lock from a semi-active radar homing, homing missile, uh, and alternatively run away, gather some distance. It looks like there are a few enemies sort of gathering on my six, and I'm going to try and at least be around to help out my enemies, uh, my, my allies rather. Uh, it's very, very rapidly falling apart, and I'm really relying on the MiG-23s that are still in the match, but unfortunately one of them got slammed with a missile, and I now have up to four enemies on my six. We've got them all within about six kilometers, so there's not a lot left for me, to be honest. And I'm going to try and get this F-14 out of the match really quick, try and take one more with me, but it's going to be pretty dicey. And even there, launching off that, uh, that missile, even with the radar slaving, it's not going to track just because of those flares, and I don't think he's got enough juice in the tank for the afterburners. He may even not have any engine power left, so I'm just going to spray, spray and pray, hopefully land something. It looks like he's going into a little bit of a turn there. I almost lose it. But just as I roll around, I get a really, really lucky fire. And I admit that I'm a pretty poor shot with the with a Vulcan, particularly on the F-104s. Uh, but man, isn't this a really hard plane just to get any semblance of work done? And now that I've got these two planes that are chasing me, I'm going to do the one thing that I can do. And it looks like that whilst my team has pretty much gone down without a fight, there are not as, as lucky on the enemy team. They are a two versus two, and it could potentially go either way. So I'm gonna head over to my MiG-23 friend, uh, try and outrun this missile, and it looks like he is trying to use the semi-active radar homing aim seven Fs on me. Uh, it's just not working, and you can see there, and you can probably hear in the background footage, the, uh, the RWR going off like crazy, and he's gonna try it again. I'm gonna see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of gentle turns, and of course it is an AIM-7F. I thought it would have been a, a, an AIM-9, but no. Nah. It's pretty much going to pr practically end here for a little bit, and we're going to move forward to a position where the MiG-23M has ripped his wing, but he's also taken out one of the other F-14s, and so this leaves one, and this, this might be a, a pretty easy, easy win here, but it looks like the F-14 is actually paying attention. So the moment I've realized that, that he's actually paying attention, that he's not in fact half asleep at the wheel. Uh, I'm pretty much confident that I am not going to make it out alive. I almost don't make it out alive there with the uh, lovely, lovely uh, uh, Rollins, but maybe I can give dogfighting a go and it's not really gonna work. The F-104 is a really poor dogfighter. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this particular plane is not really good, especially against the F-14. And you can actually see how quickly he turns around. So I'm going to switch up the plan because one of the glorious things about the F-104 is it doesn't bleed energy in a turn nearly as much because it just simply doesn't turn. And all I'm going to do here is get some speed, almost crash into the buildings of Berlin. Very, very close. I, I still can't believe that I managed to pull that off. Uh, and just, just by a, an absolute hair, miss that missile. So we're, again, pulling up to a fairly high speed. Uh, the F-14 is kind of gaining on me, uh, but I just need to pull a rabbit out of a hat somewhere. So what I decide to do is a little trick called, well, I, I don't even know what to call it. I'm going to try and slow down, but not change my direction as much. So I'm going to try and basically spin around in a circle and make the F-14 really latch onto me, but not bleed as much speed. This is the only tactic that I really have with planes that don't don't do much <laughs> and by some absolute miracle it works because i don't know this f-14 just absolutely blew right past me stuffed everything up and i managed to capitalize on his mistakes so i'm super lucky on that and you know what i'm super lucky to have you guys watching to the end of the video this plane overall is going to be a really tough plane to fly when rank 8 comes out um even more so than it is now despite that you'll probably still have fun you might have fun cleaning up your enemies as well. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for cleaning up this entire video. I'd like to thank Opera GX for sponsoring. They are an excellent sponsor. Go and check them out in the link in the description below. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time.
Take care, and I'll catch you next time.